from CNBC Global Headquarters, this is On The Money. The experts say more than 70,000 bridges are structurally deficient, one out of almost 600,000 from coast to coast. That's 13 percent of America's bridges. It will take a lifetime and cost more than $188 billion just to fix them. Construction attorney Barry LaPatner is a founding partner at the firm that bears his name. He is co-author of Structural and Foundation Failures and the author of the soon-to-be-released Broken Buildings, Busted Budgets, How to Fix America's Trillion-Dollar Construction Industry. William Shutt is a corrosion engineer for major infrastructure projects. Uh, William, let me start with you. What do you think it's going to cost to fix the infrastructure in this country? Well, the corrosion in the United States, which causes most of the problem, uh, costs the United States 3% of our GNP every year. You know, that's so you're looking at damage in excess of $30 billion. It, it can be fixed, but also we need to put in preventative measures so that we can stop this corrosion. We do it on the pipelines. Federal law requires that oil and gas pipelines have corrosion protection or uh, systems that prevent it from corroding. So we can have 100-year-old pipelines not corroding, and here's a 40-year-old bridge that collapses, and I heard today on the news that corrosion had caused the problems. Yeah, William, that was my next question. I mean, it sounds like you're concluding that corrosion was the problem. I'm not concluding at all, and we can't conclude anything until uh, the investigations are done. As I said, it'll take some time. But I heard it, one of the spokesmen say in the report that they had done before that some of the fatigue in the metal uh, uh, problems were caused by corrosion. And it was one of the uh, yeah. announcements today. We know that corrosion is a serious problem. The federal highway system uh, had over 500,000 bridges in the late 1970s. Of those 500,000, over 300,000 had a corrosion problem yeah. at that time. Barry, let's talk about how we get started. I mean, what companies could be called upon in a situation like this to come in and help and f fix existing structures, build a new bridge? There are many companies that are certainly capable of attending to correcting bridges, either doing the ongoing maintenance work or correcting a failure like this. The big problem in this country right now is that we truly have a shortage of structural engineers nationwide that could attend to a massive program to address all of the bridges, all of the infrastructure that needs to be taken care of right now. William, do you agree with that? I agree. There are a shortage of the structural engineers. There's a shortage of the corrosion engineers because they're being used. Uh, our company, are, we're corrosion engineers doing pipelines and oil wells and other things around the world. Uh, and the problem is we need to do it sooner than later because this problem accelerates. The problem we saw on that bridge did not happen over 40 years. The seriousness of that, I suspect, happened in the last five years, maybe 10 years. And, it, and, then, and the same damage could occur to a structure in the next two and a half. Well, William, I, let me ask you about that, because, of course, that's the fear that's on everyone's minds tonight. And we heard the statistic that 13 percent of bridges are structurally deficient like this one. Does that mean 13 percent of bridges could fall like this? Well, I don't know. You'd have to ask the people putting out those kind of statistics and the ones making those quotes. I would have great concern. And my recommendation, you know, from our years of experience with these bridges is they need to increase the frequency of testing until they know at what rate they are achieving this deficiency. If it happened in the last five years and it's going at a fast rate, we can't wait two years to retest them. But, William, I mean, explain to us lay people, what does structurally deficient mean? I mean, does it mean that it's in this kind of danger, or, or is that a wide category that could mean a lot of things? Well, I heard an explanation today uh, from a uh, bridge official from the, I believe it was from the Federal Highway Administration, and they have four categories or four items. They look at the bridge stack, the structure of the piers, and, and other items that they, if any one's deficient, then it's listed as a structurally deficient. Yeah. I, I, for my viewpoint on it, I'd certainly want to know what item is structurally deficient. Yeah. Barry, I mean, this is a classic example of what I think government is actually for. Uh, why wouldn't they spend the money to make sure that this doesn't happen? There's no sex appeal to a politician or a policymaker when you're talking about infrastructure work. In New York City, this, the seven, throughout the 70s and the 1980s and into the 1990s, we didn't have the money to repair our bridges and our tunnels and our roadways, and they came perilously close to collapse. Fortunately, there was surplus monies in the 90s that corrected them to the tune of billions of dollars. In our nation, politicians don't gain favor by saying they're putting monies into infrastructure. 
today as a result of this matter and, of course, the reports that yeah. have been existing, we're going to have an imperative that didn't exist before. That could change. All right, gentlemen, thanks so much for joining us tonight. We appreciate your insight.